Hello and welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Linux operating system and how to install it on Proxmox. Today we're going to be looking at an operating system that is designed for forensic investigation called CSI Linux. And taking a look at how to get it installed and running on Proxmox. So the first thing we're going to want to do is actually download CSI Linux. We can do that by clicking the download CSI Linux box right here on the main page of the CSILinux.com website. That'll give us this download page, which we want to take note of the username and password here. There's many different ways that we can install CSI Linux. And since we'll be using Proxmox, we're going to scroll down here and we're going to get ourselves the virtual application for KVM and QEMU. We do have a direct download button and we'll want to right click on it and copy link. Once we have the link copied, we're going to head back to our Proxmox server. Make sure we're logged into our web interface. Select our Proxmox server and open a shell. With shell open, we're going to issue a few different commands. The first command we're going to issue is going to be a wget command, and then we'll paste in that link address that we got from the box. After this downloads, which it'll take a considerable amount of time, I'll be back with you. Now that CSI Linux is downloaded, we can go ahead and begin exploring with it. The first thing we want to do is look here on our root directory to see our file and we notice that we have a QCOW2 file but it has been compressed with 7z. So the first thing we're going to need to do is decompress it and we most likely will need tools to decompress it. So let's start out by using apt to install a package called p7zip. And we'll make sure we have the full package by entering full after that. Once again, now that that's installed, we'll run ls so we can get our file name. And we'll go ahead and copy our file name. Now that we have our file name copied, let's actually decompress this file. We're going to decompress this file with the command 7zx. And then we'll paste our file name here. I'll return to you when this is finished decompressing. Okay, so the file has finished decompressing and we did get a error message, but it looks like it did create a file. So, okay, so there was a problem, but it was all due to something on my end. I didn't have enough storage to decompress this file into, so I had to move it on to a second drive in order to decompress it. But the rest of this tutorial should be the same, minus the location that we're working from. Now that we have CSI Linux unpacked, let's take a look at how to get it up and running inside of a VM. The first thing we're going to need to do is create a VM template in order to use. Well, not really a template, but a VM shell, I guess you would call it. In order to do that, we're going to head back here to our Proxmox web interface and we're going to click on create VM. We're going to give it a name. We'll call our CSI today, but this is entirely up to you. Pressing next, we're going to choose no media type. Pressing next, we'll click QEMU guest agent and leave everything else the same. Pressing next, we'll delete and remove our disk. Next, let's give it some resources in order to use. I'm gonna give it four cores, and like I usually do, I'm gonna change the CPU type from the default to host. This is entirely up to you and might not be the best choice if you're running a cluster, but for me, it's actually going to add a little bit of performance. Pressing next, I'm just going to give it a good round number, somewhere a little less than 8 gigs of RAM. Next, we'll leave our network bridge and everything alone for this scenario on my setup. But for your setup, you may find that you want to change your bridge type. Hitting next, we'll verify everything and press finish. This is going to create our VM shell that we will import our disk image into that we've downloaded and decompressed at the terminal. So now that we have that shell, let's head over to our terminal and you can see that we do indeed have a decompressed file here that is the QEMU disk image. How do we get it into our VM shell? Well, we're going to use the command QM and then we're going to enter import disk. We'll give it the VM ID, which is going to be 101. 
then our file name, which is CSI Linux 2023.2-disk001, and then finished off by our storage type. Now mine is storage, but if you look, most systems won't have storage by default. It'll be something like local-lvm or local-zfs, depending on if you're using LVM or ZFS. Once you have that command, you can go ahead and press enter and a process of moving that disk image from your root directory or wherever you decompressed it to over to your particular VM shell will happen. This process is going to vary depending on your server, your resources, and your disk speed, but it can take three to five minutes. I'll be back with you when this process finishes to show you what it looks like when it finishes and the next steps for getting CSI Linux up and running. Okay, we're back and the import disk has finished. Now, a couple of things I want to show you here is we get 100% as an output twice. And you want to make sure you actually wait until it says successfully imported disk after you get the two 100 outputs, and then it'll return to the command line. At this point, you know you're finished. So you can head back to your VM that we just created and then head to the hardware tab. You're gonna see unused disk zero. Clicking on unused disk zero, you can actually double click and you're going to see this window here. What this window is going to do is allow you to actually add this as a hard drive. Right now, it's not attached to your VM anything more than just symbolically by your VM ID number. So let's go ahead and attach it so we can use it. First, we can leave SCSI. The disk image location and everything was pre-configured by the import process. So if you have an SSD, you can go ahead and click discard. I happen to not be using an SSD today, so I am not going to check it. Then we can hit add, and now unused disk zero changes to hard drive SCSI zero. That's all you have to do for configuration in the hardware tab, but we do need to head to options. At options, we need to select boot order and then press edit. At the edit window, we need to make sure we check SCSI zero or whatever device our newly added hard drive is. I also like to uncheck the CD-ROM and network boot. Although this step is not essential to be done, I do feel that it just makes everything a little faster. And it'll also make diagnosing if you have any boot issues a little bit easier, as you're not going to see the boot process as it tries to attach to the network or a CD-ROM. You will just see the boot from the hard drive itself. Pressing OK, we're now ready to start our VM. So we can head up to Start. And then we can head to console. Now we don't have to use the console here in this window. We could also use the console by clicking this button. Now that CSI Linux is booted up, we can log in with a username of CSI and a password of CSI, all lowercase. This information on defaults is actually given to us on the CSI download page as the second line inside of the page. And here you have CSI Linux up and running and ready to explore and enjoy. For the most part, CSI Linux is just an Ubuntu Linux build with a lot of tools for forensic investigation added into it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you can start exploring CSI Linux and learning about forensic investigation or deploy its tools inside of your home lab for any of your other projects. Please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing today if this video helped you. And as always, have a good night.